It may be too late, it may not be, so I'm going to go with the positive thinking and hope that this video is not too late by giving you the main reasons as to why Phalaenopsis orchids are not spiking during the time of year when they normally should, hopefully giving you the opportunity to still intervene with any of the points I bring up, make the necessary adjustments if you can, and then hopefully you will still see spikes forming and get to appreciate the gorgeous blooms of your fowls in a few months. Let's get to the first and foremost reason your Phalaenopsis orchids are not coming into spike. Keep in mind, we are talking about the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids that are readily available in a diverse number of outlets. So, the main trigger that will prompt Phalaenopsis orchids to spike is a temperature drop after the second leaf is already growing to size. The second leaf may not be fully developed in its size potential, but that does not mean your orchid cannot already be exposed to a temperature drop. Your Phalaenopsis needs to have at least three leaf joints available in order for it to bloom. New leaf joints. Usually the latest new leaves will create leaf joints at the stem where the fowl will push out spikes in the next bloom cycle, but it is the third leaf joint from the top where you can expect a spike to form. Now, temperature references are all relevant to your specific temperature range that you grow your orchids in. So, Translation. Know that Phalaenopsis orchids need a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius temperature drop toward the end of their active leaf growth cycle in order for spikes to develop. So here is a scenario as an example. If for the majority of the time the temperatures of where your Phalaenopsis orchids are situated has a temperature of around 30 degrees Celsius, then they will need a temperature drop down to 20 degrees Celsius to encourage spikes to develop. Now, Take that and let's use the example of you have a temperature range consistent of 25 degrees Celsius. The drop in temperature would have to get down to 15 degrees Celsius. Know that at some point the temperature drop limit is reached because while Phalaenopsis orchids are somewhat temperature tolerant, as we go lower than 15 degrees Celsius, we are starting to invite problems like cold damage to leaves, possible loss of roots because in order for a spike to develop, we are still watering the orchids. So be very careful of how you interpret exposing your orchid to lower temperatures. There is a limit. And this is where the question from Trudy G comes into the picture because it was this question that prompted this video. And I hope what follows helps anyone that finds themselves in a similar situation. If you grow your orchids indoors where you are at and not in a specific grow room, then you probably have a steady year round temperature within your home of 20 degrees. Celsius if you're using AC throughout the winter. It's just a guess, but I hope that you are understanding where I'm going with this. So, dropping your temperature for your Phalaenopsis to spike down to 10 degrees Celsius, that is not going to result in spikes to grow. Instead, that will pretty much determine the end of your orchid. What you need to do in a scenario like this, where your ambient temperatures are steady all year round, is you need to find a place for your Phalaenopsis orchids that is going to be 10 degrees Celsius warmer than what you have now and then bring them to the environment where the temperatures are lower while still in a safe range, meaning around the 15 degrees Celsius mark. That is going to prompt them to spike. Or if you think you have missed the mark because they have been in a consistently warm environment and you want to still try and trigger spikes, you may need to move them at this point in time to a place that is much cooler than where you have them now, maybe into the garage, but make sure that it won't drop below 15 degrees Celsius and the exposure to the lower temperatures needs to last for at least four weeks. I always prefer to recommend six weeks. I find it is a better margin because if we say 
say four weeks, sometimes we then pull them out a little bit prematurely. So four to six weeks is the best way to think about how long they need to have a cool down. Now, a little bit of channel housekeeping here. While we are encouraged to keep the most important information of a video as the last point to encourage the viewer to stay and watch to the end, I do not do that. We are more intelligent than that, and I don't do the hook thing unless it fits into the flow of a video. So, if you appreciate getting the most important factor of information out of the way and then still stay and watch the video to find out what other factors come into play, please already give this video a thumbs up. I would also appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel if this is your first time here. Thank you so much for the support and if you would like to go a step further, please share this video out. It helps tremendously to get more eyeballs to the channel. Muchísimas gracias and if you can hear my little co-host in the background, that is Siliano, voicing his opinion and thank yous as well. Okay, let's get right back into the topic at hand because while we may have the temperature drop dialed in and still no spikes have started growing, do not forget to provide the next major requirement, which is light. These orchids have a reputation for growing just fine in low light levels. While that is true, it could be the reason yours are not spiking. The light levels are possibly too low. Now, while low light levels may produce spikes anyway, be prepared for a limited show of blooms if that is the case. The spike may grow nice and long because it is reaching for a light source. However, it will only produce two or three blooms. It is not to be underestimated just how much light Phalaenopsis orchids can actually tolerate as long as they are not in full sun during the hottest time of day, no matter the time of year. We always talk about winter sun, summer sun, etc., etc. And if that gets a little bit too much of a rigmarole, bright shade all the time is what they can handle. And then with the temperature drop after the major vegetative growth period is almost coming to an end, you will have an orchid with a spike full of blooms. So if you are moving your orchid to a cooler location for the temperature drop, do not forget just how much light they would need in order for them to spike. Then also at least two leaves have to grow to create nodes for a spike to form. So keep in mind that smaller complex Phalaenopsis hybrids may have been in bloom when you brought them into your home but that is because they were forced to bloom out in perfect conditions in the large mass production nurseries. If you have all the conditions I mentioned previously dialed in, also think about how they forced these orchids to bloom so that they can get them to the point of sale. Remember, they want to grow these orchids on to get them to spike and sell them as fast as possible. So what you bought may not be in a position to bloom under normal care. Without the hormones that the commercial growers pump into these orchids, growth slows down and the orchid settles into a growing habit that is conducive to its actual age. You may have at least two leaves growing within an eight month time frame, but the orchid is not mature enough to bloom just yet. Another little consideration you have to keep in mind as you analyze all this spikes yay or nay, it is possible that even without having grown two leaves, your phalaenopsis may push spikes out of the leaf joints that have already bloomed, so be on the lookout for that. However, I find that not to be the norm and don't want to push that idea so as not to create false hope. So the fact that your orchid may only be in the process of producing one leaf, thus not creating the nodes required for a spike to form, goes hand in hand with the next reason why your Phalaenopsis may not be producing spikes when it is expected to do so. And that is, it is possible that your orchid or orchids are bang smack in the middle of the acclimating process to its their new environment, and this process potentially took a little longer than expected. Even though your orchid may not have been shipped to you and you bought it locally, it still has to acclimate to its new environment and some take longer than others. As long as the orchid is growing roots and leaves, if acclimating is what stopped it from pushing a spike or two, then after the next cycle of active growth, your Phalaenopsis will bloom. Of course, another reason for a Phalaenopsis orchid to not push a spike is 
when it is in dire straits and rescue mode is full on. Now, I have spoken a lot about orchids pushing stress spikes because they are in rescue mode. I have a video about that and I will link that in the description. Or there could be another form of decline that we are trying to reverse, but know that those kinds of spikes are not a sign that your orchid is fine and strong enough to bloom. On the contrary, those spikes need to be nipped in the bud before the orchid can bloom out. So the video linked in the description is about that subject, which covers the why and when in greater detail. If you would like to get a better understanding of what your orchid is doing, why it is doing it, and if you should intervene, not intervene, and most importantly, when you should intervene as necessary. Know that the lack of fertilizer or any form of supplement is not a reason why your fowls won't spike. It would result in lesser blooms, possibly less vibrant colors, shorter spikes and reduced bloom duration. But if you were to not have fertilized your orchid or think that maybe you haven't fertilized enough, that would not be a reason as to why your fowl doesn't push spikes. So please don't adjust anything that you are doing right now. Fertilize or wise, it's not the encourager of spikes. It's only the encourager of stronger cell structures and more abundant and brighter blooms. Not fertilizing an orchid is not going to stop it from blooming. Just a little FYI, in case you were wondering if your fertilizing regime was off. So this video was all about why Phalaenopsis orchids may not be growing spikes during a time of year when they are expected to. Now, if you have any questions about existing spikes and letting them branch, is it a good thing, a bad thing, etc., leave me your case scenario in the comments and we can dive into that angle in greater depth there. Know that while having an existing spike branch may be the reason your orchid is not producing a new spike from existing nodes that have previously not grown a spike, it is not the main reason and should not be taken as a sign that the still green spike that is branching has to be cut off. Cutting off an existing spike that is branching, which is going to bloom and not producing a keiki, cutting that off will not trigger a spike to grow from a leaf joint. You see, the branching of an existing spike also happens because of a temperature drop. So it may be too late in the growing cycle of the fowl to cut off that branching spike in the hopes it'll grow a new spike. If you want to have blooms from that orchid, I would just let it do that on the branch that is coming out of that older spike. Because I have an example for you, which is gonna seg right into my last reason as to why your fowl may not be growing a spike and that is a recent repot, which includes a setup change, but is not limited to a setup change. Any kind of repot, any kind of stressor like that, it is possible that your orchid will not grow a spike when it is expected to do so. You see, my Romeo's Nuve here was transitioned into Lekka and self-watering during the summer of 2023 from the regular mix that these orchids come in and has transitioned beautifully without a hitch. She has also grown all the new structures that she needs to make way for spikes to grow on nodes that are now mature enough to do so. She has had plenty of light during the time that she was growing these structures. However, she did not absorb one of her spikes and is choosing to branch off of that one. So there will be blooms, but you can see how an orchid can respond to acclimating plus repotting when it comes to lack of new spikes. And if, for example, the spike hadn't branched out, I would not have been worried about it. It is part and parcel. It is a normal process of how an orchid adapts to the new environment, even though locally bought. But we shall see new spikes if all goes well and dingling here doesn't make a mistake throughout the coming growing season. We shall see new spikes on Romeo's Nube, hopefully in about 12 months. Stick around for that. I'm excited to see what she does next because this orchid has the most beautiful pure white big lip blooms. So these are my most important factors for you to take into consideration to get a complex Phalaenopsis hybrid to grow spikes. If you feel I have omitted any reasons that you have experienced with your Phalaenopsis and have successfully changed that scenario to get your fowl to bloom, please share that in the comments for anyone coming to this video who goes into the comments searching for more information and opinions. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and wish you a beautiful day on the condition though that you stay safe. Take care. Bye!